Hello and welcome to the FL Studio video tutorial on using the FL Studio Mixer. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use the various different types of tracks and controls available to you in the FL Studio Mixer. Let's begin with a quick tour. The mixer contains 64 insert tracks, 4 send tracks, and a master track. The insert tracks are displayed in groups of 16 tracks at a time. To access the other groups, use the Tracks Group Selector. The insert tracks take the audio output from all the instrument tracks in FL Studio. And in the default setup, once the audio signal is processed, with the built-in EQ, volume, and panning, it is sent to the master mixer track. The FL Studio mixer also contains four send tracks. The send tracks do not receive a direct audio input from the instruments. They can receive audio from one or more of the insert tracks. Send tracks allow you to set up a single effect track and use it in varying amounts from any of the other insert tracks. Unless some of the other insert tracks are routed directly to an ASIO output, the whole output of FL Studio then goes to the master mixture track for final processing before output to your speakers. Okay, now we have a feel for all the individual sections of the mixer. Let's look in more detail at some of the other features. The FL Studio Mixer features a three-band parametric equalizer. The equalizer is very similar to the standalone parametric EQ plugin, which comes with FL Studio. However, the band types in this version are predefined and cannot be changed. Band 1 is a low shelf and filter. Band 2 is a bell curve filter. And band 3 is a high shelf filter. The mixer also includes a stereo separation filter, which allows you to increase or decrease the difference between the left and right audio channels of your mix. In the default middle position, the stereo separation filter is disabled. If you turn the wheel to the left, the stereo separation is decreased. And turning it all the way to the left results in a mono sound. Turning the wheel to the right increases the stereo separation. Two more integrated filters to note in the mixer are the volume and panning filters, which helps you avoid using dedicated plug-in filters to adjust the track's volume and panning. The volume and panning controls are also available for all mixer tracks, so you can adjust the mix level of the mixer track quickly and easily, without selecting each individual track to see its properties panel. The four sends level will appear only on insert tracks. They allow you to set the amount of signal sent to each of the four send tracks in the mixer. Turning a send wheel completely to the left results in it being turned off for the specified track, while turning it to the right means the whole of the insert track signal will be processed by that effect. The mixer pop-up menu lets you access several mixer-related functions. You can open and save a mixer track state, allowing you to move between different mixer configurations. You can also choose to show or hide the volume and panning control windows, and whether to show or hide the vertical name levels for each of the mixer tracks. The Disk Record menu allows you to access various functions related to recording the output of FL Studio to disk, which is covered more in depth in the audio recording tutorial. Other options are also provided for linking tracks, naming tracks, as well as enabling Smart Disable for the plug-in filters in all tracks. Okay, well that's about it. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and now have a good feel for using the FL Studio Mixer. Of course, there isn't time in a short video to cover all the possible options. FL Studio comes with excellent online documentation, which you can use alongside this tutorial to answer more detailed questions as your knowledge of the program increases. Thanks for your attention and have fun with FL Studio.